Hello chess friends! January 15th this year will be remembered as the day when India got the youngest Grandmaster and second World Young Grandmaster ever. Indian prodigy Gukesh D successfully completed his path to become Grandmaster by obtaining his last GM norm in 17th Delhi Open GM GS Chess Tournament. After making draw in round 8 against strong Grandmaster from Tajikistan Farukh Amonatov, rated 2621, Gukesh was waiting to see the pairings of round 9. If his opponent in round 9 was a player rated 2550 or more, he would need a draw for GM norm. If his 9th round opponent was lower rated, win was required. His opponent in round 9 was Indian international master Dinesh K. Sharma, rated 2303, and it was clear that Lukesh needs a win for a great achievement. And his game, which we will see very soon, was a small masterpiece. 12 years, 7 months and 17 days, Gukesh obtained one of the best chess success ever. He became Grandmaster only 17 days after current record holder Sergei Karyakin. I am very happy that Round Robin Tournament Orbis 2 2018 in Parachin, Serbia, where Gukesh supremely obtained his second GM norm, will be remembered as a path of his great success. I would like to congratulate to Gukesh, his unlimitedly supportive family and to his coaches on this great achievement. And let's see now the game in which Gukesh played as white. It was played e4, e6, d4, d5, so French defense. Gukesh played third move knight d2, Tarash variation of French defense, and now his opponent played bishop e7, which is rare continuation. There are other moves which are played much more than bishop e7, for example, knight f6 move, where after e5, knight fd7, bishop d3, c5, c3, knight c6, knight e2, cd4, cd4, f6, e takes f6, knight takes f6, knight f3, bishop d6, castle, and now there are three continuations for black. Black can play short castle, queen c7 or queen b6. Another alternative in the move number 3 for white is to play c5 third move, where after ed5 black can take queen d5 or ed5. The main move is ed5, but it is also possible to take queen d5 and the game can continue like this, after which white will retake the pawn on d4 and white will hope to obtain some advantage by using his queenside pawn majority in this game. Or if e takes d5, then knight gf3, knight c6, bishop b5, and now once bishop is moved of f8, now white takes on c5, and after bishop c5, short castle, knight e7, knight b3, bishop d6, rook e1, short castle, and this is fully theoretical position. Third option, which is also played more than uh, bishop e7 move, which uh, Dinesh Sharma played in this game, is Rubinstein variation d4. Actually, the position transposes into Rubinstein variation after knight d7, knight f3, knight f6, capture, capture, bishop d3, c5, important move, dc5, bishop c5, castle, castle, and so on. And if you missed to see my lesson in which I made introduction to French defense, all of those lines and many others you can see in that lesson and information about that you can see in right upper corner. But let's go back to the game. In the game Dina Sharma played bishop e7 move. And now after e5, c5, c3, knight c6, bishop d3, c takes d4, c takes d4. Now this pawn on d4 is um, not defended and black can capture that pawn, but this is simply a trap. It's impossible to capture that pawn because if this happens, then the position is immediately lost for black after queen g4 move. Now you see that knight is hanging on d4 as well as the pawn on g7, and after let's say knight c6, queen g7, there is no defense for the rook on h8 except if black plays bishop f6, but that loses the piece and white wins the game. That is why 
Black played here queen b6, which is of course a better move. And now white played knight from d to f3 with the idea to develop g1 knight to e2 square. Knight h6, the only square to develop uh, this kingside knight, with the idea to play knight f5, which is typical for French defense, and attack furthermore the pawn on d4. And after knight e2, this is the first critical moment of the game in which black played wrong move. He played here f6 and we will see what happened a little bit later. Much better move in this position is knight f5. And now after castle and castle, um, actually this pawn on d4 is safe. Because if white plays a3 in this position, it is bad for black to capture knight d4. Because at the end, of course, you see that there is now bishop h7 and queen on d4 is lost. So that is why the pawn on d4 is perfectly safe. Instead of playing a3 for white, white can decide actually capturing bishop f5. But after e takes f5, queen d3, black is okay in this position. Although white still has some obvious space advantage. But instead of this knight f5 move, which was better to continue, black played f6. And after e takes f6, bishop f6. This was the moment in which Gukesh was deciding should he capture uh, the knight on h6 or play short castle. And he decided to play short castle, although alternative was to capture the knight on h6 and after gh6 then to castle. This is now a very interesting position in which uh, Gukesh can sacrifice a couple of pawns, but black will have very bad position about his king. So after queen takes b2, knight f4, and after knight takes d4, rook b1 to attack the queen, and after queen c3, rook c1, another important move, and after queen b4, great move, knight e5, clearing this queen's diagonal, preparing queen h5, and although at this moment black is up in material, white's position is almost winning. Instead of entering these complications in which he will need to sacrifice some pawns, Gukesh decided to play short castle normal move. And now after knight f7, very nice idea which Gukesh invented in this position is sacrificing the pawn, the pawn on d4 in order to obtain strong attack against black's king. Knight f4 move, very, very nice idea. Knight takes d4, black captured the pawn, there is nothing else in this position. And after knight h5, knight f3, queen f3, and bishop e5. Forced move because bishop was under attack on f6 square. And after bishop e3 move, this is now the first key moment Actually, the first key mistake black made in this game. It was very important in this position to control a3, f8 diagonal and to make it possible for black king to castle. That is why good move in this position was queen b4. And after, let's say, uh, a3, queen e7. And after rook ac1, we must admit that um, white has full compensation here for being down... Uh, for being down a pawn, um, but position for black is of course completely playable. Instead of keeping the queen on that diagonal, he played queen d8, and now excellent move, Gukesh played bishop c5. This move now will not allow black to castle, and his king is forced to stay in the middle of the board. He played bishop d7, trying maybe to escape with the king on the queen side and also to complete his development. And now Gukesh played rook from f to e1, which is a good looking move, but very interesting continuation was rook from a to e1. And after queen c7, queen e3, rook c8, b4, b6, f4. And after bishop f6, simply capturing knight f6, g takes f6, and after bishop d4, this is also winning position for white, so many weaknesses in black's position. Instead of rook from a to e1, he played rook from f to e1, which is also a good move. And now black made second mistake, very big mistake, after which position is almost lost.
The best move here for black was queen to g5, and the idea of this move is to play g6, next move, forcing knight to go to g3, and to force some simplifications, which will make black's position much easier to play. But instead of that move, he played queen to c7. And now, after rook from a to c1, position is very bad, queen is not defending the king anymore on the king's side, which is also very important, and position is practically lost. After rook c8 and queen g4, it was ready to resign at this point. But let's see how Gukesh supremely won this game. g6, and now this is a wonderful moment of the game in which Gukesh proved his really, really huge talent by playing the next move. You can now pause this video and try to find the winning move for Gukesh. And I will show you now, this is fantastic move, knight g7 check. Offering the whole knight. Offering the whole knight, if uh, bishop captures the knight, which happened in the game, then rook e6 and black can just resign the game. We will see what happened to the end of the game. Let's see what's going on if now simply king moves. The only square for the king is king d8, then knight e6, bishop e6, queen e6. Rook e8, queen d5 check, queen d7, queen d7, king d7, and bishop b5. Huge material disadvantage and ready to resign. Of course, white easily wins this position. Dina Sharma decided to capture the knight. And now after rook e6, actually he didn't take bishop e6 now, he played king d8. But in the case of bishop e6, look what a nice end we have here, bishop e7. And now, interesting, if... Uh, queen takes uh, e7, excellent checkmate, rook c8. And um, if, uh, for example, king e8 is played here, then just bishop e5 check, and queen must be lost. And it's, of course, completely, completely terrible. And not only that queen is lost, it is very nice checkmate now, bishop a3 check. Now queen cannot capture the queen on e6 because queen is pinned to the king, and after king d8, queen e7 is nice mate. Instead of this... Um, black played king d8, and now it is all almost forced. Actually, bishop e7, bishop d6 check, king d8, bishop takes e7, rook takes e7, rook takes e7, king c7, and after queen f4, black resigned the game because he is uh, so much down in material and there is nothing what can be done anymore in this position. So this is very nice miniature by new Grandmaster Gukesh, the youngest Indian Grandmaster ever and the second world youngest Grandmaster ever. Fantastic success by Indian Prodigy. That would be all for this video chess lesson. If you want to see some specific content in my video chess lessons, please place the comment below my video on YouTube. Take a look at these suggested videos and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel.